Welcome to Relica Extreme One Chunk. If you're new here, you joined at the perfect time because I have just completed three pretty massive chunks and starting on a clean slate this episode. 400 hours in Relica killing locals and fishing sharks, 200 hours of raking weeds at a single hops patch, and another 400 hours killing ice trolls and smithing over 75,000 steel bars in Yatizo. After those happy little grinds, I rolled four chunks in a row with just a few menial tasks and today I am rolling again. The possibilities include 4 million hops over a broken bridge 20,000 berries to pick from a single bush patch 3 1 in 5,000 pets Or the chunk equivalent of the good lord himself winning the lottery at Christmas Eve. Which one will we get? We'll start rolling right after the intro. Welcome back to Relica Extreme One Chunk. At the moment, my chunk is the Fremenic Forest, and the only chunk goal is to make a part wild pie at 85 cooking. Currently, I am level 81, and I'm almost done with all of the sharks that I got from the ice troll grinds in the previous episodes. And uh, yeah, I have to figure out something else for this remaining 900k XP. Alrighty, that is the last of the sharks. Let's go ahead and see what we have here. Uh, 13 sharks left, that's okay. 868 sharks cooked and 286 burned. Not too bad. That's gonna be a nice stack of food for some future PVM. But yeah, I do have a method planned out for the remaining 950k XP we need for level 85. And I think the best way is to just buy 10,000 tuners right here from the Flossies Fishmongers. 44 coins each, not bad at all. And the shop restocks very quickly, as you can see there. So I can just buy all of the tuna, maybe even some salmon or lobsters or something else if I need to. Uh, buy all the fish, cooking them all, and I guess save them or sell them back to this Kipa Ketilon right here. Uh, let's see, yeah, he stocks all of the fish, so we could sell them right here. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any sort of range or anything on Yatizo. The closest one is on Needis Knot, so I would have to bank all of these and then go to Needis Knot and cook them. Or I guess I could go the old-fashioned way and just start a fire here, buy them, cook them, sell them, so on and so on. Yeah, this is not actually even all that bad. I can bring some logs here, just cook all of the fish right here, sell them right back to the keeper kettle and at least make a little bit of money back from this. And then just buy a new inventory, cook them all here. And uh, yeah, this should be fine. I have like uh, 700 arctic pine logs or something also from the ice trolls. So that should probably be enough to cook all of this fish that we need for 85 cooking. And I am getting like 120k XP per hour at the moment, which is not too bad at all. I'm just AFKing. If I'm really concentrating, I might be go to like 150k per hour or something like that. You know, just AFKing this is not bad at all. Maybe only like 10 hours, 8 hours, something like that of cooking. But thinking back, it does kind of hurt that I sold 10,000 raw sharks to Sigmund way back in like episode 6 or 7 or something like that. But anyways, yeah, I... That would have been a pretty massive amount of cooking XP if I have cooked all of those. Well, different times. So I've done about an hour of this and as you can see the XP has kind of stabilized at around like 115k per hour, which is not that bad at all. Still like over anything over 100k is just very good here. And we are getting our first cooking level of this little mini grind right here. Just five levels and then we can start rolling yet again. Uh, we got really lucky in the last episode, but up oh, there's 82 cooking, or oh, three levels more. Yeah, nice. But yeah, we got really lucky with our rolls uh, last episode. Not bad grinds at all, so hopefully we avoid all those death chunks in this episode as well. A random event, the beehive. I think you can get some lamps from this. Let's see. Yep, a lamp and some flax. That is beautiful. That is, of course, going into agility, and that should be... 28 agility. Only two more levels for the bike in Kellegrim, if we ever roll Kellegrim, that is. I'm kind of hoping we do at some point. Lovely fires. 
People from these island accused me of witchcraft. Oh. This is so wrong. Could you stop being busy? Oh, wow. Roberto88. Thank you so much for the bone, my man. That is very, very generous. Thank you. 83 cooking, two more levels to go. And a couple hours later, there's 84 cooking as well. Members can now cook anglerfish. And 1050 total as well. Pretty nice. Um, yeah, one more level and we are free. Here we go. The last level is coming in very soon. This has been a nice little AFK grind. I did most of this while editing the last episode. So yeah, it has been pretty nice just AFKing, buying fish and cooking and selling. And I haven't used like almost any money, maybe like 100k or something. So if anybody wants to get some free cooking XP, this is a, well, at least a decent way to get some cooking XP. I guess it's not the best in the game. But anyways, there is 85 cooking. Members can now cook wild pie and create the infernal harpoon and i also did get to 49 fire making and i'm really close to level 50 so i'm just gonna get a couple of logs here and spam the clan chat with some achievements real quick there we go level 50 fire making as well mahogany logs maple pyre logs and a winter sword maybe one day but yeah, that was um, the level that we need. Now let's go ahead and create the part wild pie. As somebody mentioned in the previous episode, RuneScape is the only game where you're going to need 85 cooking to lazily slap a piece of meat into a pie shell. That is pretty interesting indeed. But we are done here. Let's go into the chunk picker and start picking up some more chunks. We are taking a quick little break for a few announcements. First of all, my chunk picker now has a custom four letter code Looney. So going forwards, if you want to check all the chunk tasks and available chunks, use that new code Looney instead of the old one. Secondly, the channel has grown a lot during the previous months. So a massive thank you to every one of you who has subscribed. But that also means that we have access to some more emote slots for channel members. So there are four new emotes for channel members to use, a red token, a lit icon, a prey icon and a chunk icon, bringing the new total to eight emotes for you to use. They are very simple to use, just type colon, loony and your favorite emote, such as colon, loony, chunk, colon. They are very affordable options to become a channel member in the join button right next to the subscribe button, so if you're interested in some custom emojis to use in the comments, check those out. And the final announcement, one chunkers and especially me, Stanky and Sauce Chunk got shouted out in the recent community highlight, which is really amazing for the whole one chunk community. So a big thank you to Jagex for this honor. Now with all those announcements out of the way, let's get back to the video. Here we are, let's cross off our only task, 85 cooking for a pot wild pie and just calculate to make sure that we don't have anything else in here. Yep, all done and we are ready to roll. Uh, all the chunks are pretty much the same as in last episode, except we have this chunk right here, the Relica Mines, and this chunk to the east, the Golden Apple Tree. Uh, either of them don't have any task, I think, so those are pretty much free chunks, but let's go ahead and see what we get. 3, 2, 1, and pick a chunk. And we land on the Fremenic Mine, okay, nice. Yeah, as I said, there doesn't seem to be any chunk task in here, just the mines and some trees probably, but uh, we'll go ahead and check it in the game anyways. Alrighty, this is the chunk, the Relica or the Fremenic mine. Doesn't seem like there's really anything in here. Black unicorns, I suppose. Those are kind of new. We have Sviti, a new NPC. None of your business, leave me alone. Okay, he is not a friendly man. So up north here we have the uh, mine that the chunk is named after. Just some iron and coal, nothing too fancy. And there's no banks nearby, so this is not a really good mine, I think. We are like two or three tiles away from Keldegrim's entrance. So that is pretty exciting and terrifying at the same time. Keldegrim has a lot of tasks, but it's also a really good place to get. Yeah, we have the relic of fence in this chunk. Obviously, we need like 57 agility to go through here. So, yeah, that's not an option just yet, but it's pretty cool to have it as an option. But yeah, that is everything in this chunk. Let's go back to the chunk picker and pick some more chunks. So, that unlocks the ability to roll the mountain camp and Kellagrim. 
as you can see here i have my telegram with a, a death chunk icon it is not really a death chunk anymore because we already have that ada smithing for um, adam and play party so there's not really all that much to do in Kellegrim. There's still a lot, but not as much as before. And then Mountain Camp, I don't really think has anything except for the one quest. So yeah, that's basically everything. And we are ready to roll yet another chunk. Let's go pick a chunk. What are we getting this time? Golden apple tree. Okay. So yet again, there seems to be no chunk tasks at all in this area and it seems like a pretty dead chunk, except for we have the Fremenix layer cave in this chunk. I didn't even realize that. But yeah, that seems to be pretty much everything in this chunk. Uh, let's go and see it in the game if we find anything. Back in the game and this is the chunk that we just rolled, the golden apple tree and the Fremenix layer dungeon. So we have yet another fairy ring and the uh, golden apple tree and the slayer cave and pretty much nothing else. Oh yeah, I just realized that means that we can now actually uh, make some layers ourselves. If we can cut from the swaying tree that we unlocked last time and then now we can buy the fleeces from Lali as well. But here in the mountain pass that is leading to the troll stronghold there's nothing there and there's these rocks in the way. So these I think need climbing boots. So I guess this chunk is kind of a rollable at the moment, although we can really only move like four tiles in that way. And uh, then we have the Fremenix Layer Dungeon, obviously, right there. A new fairy ring, AJR, I think, and the golden apple tree and the golden sheep. Cave entrance. Uh, okay, that's Lolly's house. We don't go in there. But I think Lolly will sell us some golden fleece now, so we can make our own layers if we want to. Uh, gonna have some more golden wool? I have never bought golden wool from you but okay 1000 coins yeah i'll do that yeah golden fleece that's it not golden wool golden fleece that's the uh the thing that we can make into some new strings for layers warning this area contains very dangerous creatures do not pass unless properly prepared absolutely yeah a new music track the slayer this is the slayer cave there's a lot of slayer monsters in here but obviously our slayer level is one at the moment and we have no way of training it except for lamps so maybe in some sort of a future we might have access to some of these monsters i mean it would be very cool to have like two rusks or two rods get some battle access or something but yeah uh, we'll have to see about that at the moment it is just a kind of a dead unlock nothing just yet but if we can get some slayer levels in the future then it might be very impactful so yeah that is another empty chunk yet again uh let's go back to the chunk picker get some more chunks hopefully we get some chunk tasks pretty soon here so i suppose we do unlock this chunk as a rollable one even though we can really access only those five, five or six tiles there but it is still accessible so I guess that is now a rollable option. I'm kind of hoping for some chunk tasks. Maybe one of the skill capes could be pretty cool. Uh, like maybe the ranging or the fishing wouldn't be too bad, I guess. So I don't know. Uh, let's see what we get. Anything in this roll. And where do we land this time? Ooh, that's Kildegrim. Oh yes, that is Kildegrim, boys. Wow, that is a lot of chunk tasks right there. Oh my lord. Let's just pause it right there for a second. You might be asking, hey Looney, I thought Keldegrim was supposed to be a death chunk. Why do you sound so excited? Well, Keldegrim is going to take a while, but it's not all that bad anymore after I got 88 smithing already. And even though I told myself I wouldn't quote Swamp Ladix in my series, I'm just gonna say it. This chunk changes everything. There are so many immediate upgrades I can get from here, such as the Rune Longsword, the Addy Crossbow, Diamond and Ruby Bolts, and all the crafting molds for jewelry. But the best part of Kellogrim is that it future proofs multiple massive grinds for future chunk rolls. 99 smithing is not even a big deal with access to the Blast Furnace. 80 agility would have taken 4 million hops over the broken bridge, and now I can just AFK on the bike once I land to level 30. 
Minigame teleporter blast furnace is my first good teleport that doesn't require raw shocks and inventory slots to use. And interestingly, we also get access to brewing, which then gives access to all sorts of boosts if we get the relevant hops for it in the future. Best case scenario, something like uh, brew a mature dwarven stout. Now I only need 97 smithing to make a room plate buddy instead of level 99, which is going to save me like tens of hours of grinding until I need to get the skill cape. So yeah, there are a lot of great things about Kelgrim, but there are also some pretty time-taking uh, chunk tasks, so let's get to it. Taking a look at all of the chunk tasks that we have in the skilling task, we have 40 attack for a rune weapon, not a problem at all, 70 crafting for a diamond amulet, and 75 thieving for uh, thieving from a gem stall, a diary task. As for best in slot, we have the rune longsword, the adamant crossbow, and diamond bolts. For the quest task we have Giant Dwarf and Olaf's quest. And finally for the diary task we have a couple of easy framework diary tasks and a couple of hard diary tasks. Overall I think it is a pretty nice and balanced kind of uh, list. Uh, some really easy tasks and some of them are gonna take some time. So let's get back into the game and start knocking these tasks out. Alrighty, here we are, Kelgrim. Oh boy, this is going to be so cool. And obviously we get a lot more than Kelgrim as well. We have the ship to Weiss, um, a new fairy ring, we have Olaf's quest and a little bit of the Polar Hunter area as well. Uh, first of all, something very, very nice actually is going to be these double rock wrap spots. You don't have any of these in Relica. So here we have two rock wraps that can attack you. Yeah, I know, I mean... Chunkmen can get very happy about very small things, but that is actually pretty big for me. Uh, then we have Larry. Uh, doesn't have time for me. Okay, so that is uh, just the penguin quest, uh, which we do not have access to just yet. And then we have Olaf Hradson, the Olaf's quest giver. Identify yourself. I'm gonna do this later, I think. I don't have time for you just now. And then up here we have a little part of the uh, Kebit Hunter or the Polar Hunter area. We have Sabertooth Kebits, some Sapphire Glacialis, Snowy Knights and these birds as well. Uh, obviously we can't really catch any of these just yet. Uh, polar Kebits we could, they are level 1 but they need I think a Noose Wand or something. So that is not an option, but maybe in the future if we get a butterfly net from Puro Puro or something, then we could come back here and start doing some hunter training maybe. And up here on top of the mountain we only have yet another fairy ring. We are unlocking quite a lot of fairy rings, that is actually pretty interesting. And I think we don't really have anything else. Just this one tree that is used in Olaf's quest as well, but as I said we're gonna do that later. For now, let's see the main prize and get into Kellegrim for the very first time. And as you might know, Kellegrim starts with the giant dwarf cutscene, which is like 10 minutes long, so I'm just gonna cut it right around here. And here we are, we crashed with the boat into the king's uh, statue, and now we are uh, talking to Commander Veldaban and maybe not getting arrested, hopefully. The Giant Dwarf quest is all about getting a replacement for the statue that we just demolished and we need to get a suitable model for Placida the sculptor to work with. He wants us to get clothes, an axe and boots fit for a king and those three little subquests make up the bulk of the quest itself. As for me, I can get the clothes done completely, one of the two boots as the other one needs telekinetic grab and a little part of the axe done as well since it needs to be repaired by Thurgo all the way back near Port Sorim, so we are not gonna do that in just a little while. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we are now in Kellegrim and we have some amazing shops here. First of all, Suntiri sells us the Rune Longsword, oh baby. That is a massive upgrade over the last, uh, I think, uh, Fremenic Blade, which is basically an Adamant Simitar was our best in slot previously. So yeah, this is a much, much better weapon. Down here we have the Stonemason, who sells all sorts of things for construction, and that is an easy task in the Fremenic area to browse his shop. So that is another chunk task done. Uh, these are quite expensive, even though I have a lot of gold. 10 million coins for the golden dense cold, holy shit, okay, I'm not buying that. Then we have access to this bar right here, I think they sell uh, Dwarven Stouts. Yes, please, a Dwarven Stout. That is a plus one smithing and mining boost, so if we are going to get some sort of a mining or smithing task in the future, then we can skip one level, which is pretty nice. Saro here sells, well, 
kind of shitty armor to be honest some added chain buddies and yeah that's it then through here we have the kill the hopes patch i don't actually know how this works i thought i think we cannot really do anything with it before we start the quest but uh, we'll see in the future maybe down here we have a general store and some interesting items here a pestle mortar a candle a torch and otherwise kind of standards i'm gonna buy a torch here and a candle i think and maybe even a pestle and mortar even though i don't really have access to hell her law in like a year or two but yeah that's that's okay uh gamundi here um i think she sells some sort of clothes these are weird looking to be honest uh, i guess we're gonna buy maybe the blue trousers or the shorts uh oh oh no 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 <laughs> this is rated r okay those are coming swiftly off um okay uh swiftly moving on um what else do we have in Kelgrim? Here we have Blasid the Sculptor, who uh, wants the battle axe, the clothes and the boots fit for a king. So we are starting that right here. And now we can do three, all these three parts in like whatever order we want. And here's the kind of marketplace of Kelgrim. We have a bakery stall and a bakery merchant. Here is Hervey with his gemstones, three sapphires, a emerald and a ruby in stock. That's pretty nice. And we can also steal from the gemstone at 75 thieving, which is our task. Then we have ring molds, amulet molds, and I think we can get all sorts of other molds as well by stealing from the stall. Herco right here, my man, he sells all sorts of stocks. The mahogany stock is the one we want for the adamant crossbow, obviously. Then Guldamar here basically sells just a silver bar, an ore, and a holy mold, or a holy symbol, I guess. And then we have another clothes style. Oh, ooh, we have a mysterious old man. What is this? A maze. Sure, I'll do that. And from the maze we get steel arrows, feathers, and nature runes. Not too amazing. Uh, continuing on, we have Vermundi. I guess she has similar kinds of clothes. I hope these are not as uh, like as R-rated as the previous ones. Let's check the uh, skirt and the woven top. Let's see what it looks like. Oh my fucking god, these are even maybe worse. Well, no, no, not as worse as these were. These are just oh. <laughs> But Vermundi here is also a part of the giant wolf quest. Basically, she can do the uh, clothes fit for a king with her spinning machine right there. She just needs some coal, some logs, a tinderbox and some coins. Well, what a surprise. Most logs will work. However, arctic pine logs don't. Uh, and those are the only logs I have in my bank, like 600 of them. So I'm getting some normal logs here. Use your coal on the spinning machine, light it with a tinderbox, there goes the coal, uh, talk to Wemmundi again and pay her 200 GP. Oh my god, look at the animation. Wow, that's fancy. And there we go. Look at those beautiful clothes. Are they beautiful? I guess they are. Can I wear them? Exquisite clothes. Uh, too small for me, I might ruin them if I put them on. Okay, so <laughs> I'm too big for that. But that is step 3a as in armor done for the giant wolf quest, let's move on to step b for boots. So after talking to Saro here, he indeed tells us that he has made a pair of exclusive special boots, but he has sold them and we need to find them. And the buyer is Dromund in this house, however he will not part with the boots for any price for a human. So the boots are mine and you are not having them, that means we have to... <clears throat> acquire them in another manner and we can get the left boot right here once he passes us there we go we have the left boot but for the right boot we are going to need telekinetic grab so that we can grab it from the window there so that is happening after we unlock magic in some sort of a way probably either sears village or waterbirth island so we will revisit this later and finally, Santiri has a very special battle axe that has been in his family for generations. But unfortunately, it is in very bad condition. The blade has completely rusted away, the sapphires are broken, and so on and so on. 
so we need to repair it. Oh, and I like that he is actually complimenting my smithing skills. Yeah, boy, I am level 88. So we can repair a little bit of the battle axe that we just got. We just need to attach three cut sapphires into it. And now all it needs is a little sharpening. However, that is a little bit tricky. The only dwarf that knows how to sharpen this axe apparently is Thurgo in Port Serim. So that is why the trend dwarf is going to be on a backlog for quite a long time, most probably. Mr. Librarian, can you find me an Imkando Dwarf to repair an ancient battle axe? I'm afraid I can't help you there. Kelligram lost contact a long time ago. I suppose you could try Reldo in the Palace of Varrock. So that is the next step in this part of the quest, meaning that we are completely done with the quest for now, and that is a chunk task complete. Once we get access to Telekinetic Grab, we can get the right boot and continue the quest that way, and then we need to get into Varrock to ask Reldo about some Imkando Dwarves, but as you can see, uh, Varrock is quite a long way away at the moment. And after we get to Varrock, we need to get the Ports Rim to talk to Thurgo, so that is it for the Giant Dwarf for the foreseeable future, unfortunately. So I'm just going to store all of these items right here in the bank next to all of the other quest items for Murder Mystery. And now that we are in the bank, let's knock out another chunk task as well. We have the adamantite limbs, the crossbow string and the mahogany stock finally, meaning that we can make ourselves the adamant crossbow. So we attach the limbs into the stock. Yep, and we have adamant crossbow on strong, and then we string it with the crossbow string, and there we have it, the adamant crossbow. Oh my lord, that is beautiful. What a great range to weapon that is. Especially now that we have access to diamond bolts as well. If we can enchant them in the future when we get access to magic, that's gonna be so good for any sort of ranging. But yeah, that is our best in slot ranging weapon for now. Definitely better than the maple shot bow that we had earlier. And that is another chunk task done. As for the Rune Longsword, here's a little comparison, plus 21 melee strength over the uh, Fremnic Blade, and a lot of stab and slash bonus as well. So that is a strictly better weapon than the Fremnic Blade is. And I am really happy that we have a new best in slot melee weapon right there. Now let's knock out a few other tasks as well. The easy framing diary to a steal from the crafting stall or the bakery stall apparently works as well. So there's that achievement done. Very quick and easy. And then we need to talk to the Blast Furnace Foreman to get the uh, permission to use the Blast Furnace free of charge. You are here to help. Uh, yes. Um, can I use the Blast Furnace to smelt some ore? Uh, charge a fee for anyone who doesn't have level 60. I have level 60. I have more than that. A human has level 60. How extraordinary. Feel free to use the furnace. Uh, yeah, there we go. A completed hard task in the Fremnik area, so that is another chunk task done. And the Fremnik diary is starting to look pretty damn nice, I gotta say. And to be honest, even though I just did 88 smithing, uh, I'm kind of waiting that we get some access to a runite ore or rune bars or something, so we could get some more best in slots in the runite department. And just look at this shop. Oh my lord, is it so much better than ring rings. But yeah, we could get like rune scimitars, rune chain bodies, all that good runite stuff, so that is a big upgrade once we get some rune ores. And it's not gonna be that bad with blast furnace, even though... You know, it's going to take some time and some money, but uh, it's it's going to be fine. And here we also have the coveted pedals. You need to have level 30 agility to pedal the conveyor belt. And that is 1 XP per game tick, if I'm not mistaken. And it takes a little bit of run energy. And I think you can get like a couple of thousand agility XP per hour. And you also have this pump that people use to get strength XP quite frequently. I am not getting any XP at the moment though. Oh yeah, I think you need to fill this thing with coke first. That is 5 fire making XP right there. Imagine doing this to 99 fire making. I know some people have done that, so that's quite amazing. What the hell just happened to my character? What is wrong with you? You got a like a spinal tap or something? Okay, but now we should be able to get some strength XP. Look at that, 2 XP at a time. <laughs> and people, especially Pures, use this method quite a lot to get some strength XP here for free, I guess. So I am not going to use this. Obviously, I have some other methods like rock grabs. 
but uh, I am going to use the pedals most likely at some point. I'm not going to go to level 30 just yet. Uh, once I want to get some agility XP, then I'm going to go level 30 with lamps. I kind of want to see if I get like CS Village or something else before I commit to the agility grind. But if I roll like the Lighthouse Bridge, oh, you can also get crafting XP here. That's cool. But yeah, uh, if I get the Lighthouse Bridge before uh, CS Village or something like that, then I'm going to land to level 30 and use this bike instead because it's just going to be much, much faster to level 80. Here is another chunk task. We can now cut a diamond, make it into diamond bolt tips and attach the diamond bolt tips into diamond bolts, which is pretty cool. Those are really good ammunition, especially once we get access to magic, we can enchant them in the Diamond Bolts E and probably everybody knows how good they are. So yeah, that is another chunk task done. Let's move on something else. And that something else is level 75 thieving, which is one of my biggest chunk tasks. Just over 1 million XP that I need to get. And I think the best way to do this is just uh, three from the stalls in Relica. I have my main part right here having the attention of all the market gods, and that means I can just go around and thieve from all of these stalls. Like so, no problem at all. And I think I might only need these three stalls on the west side, but maybe... Oh, I missed one. There we go, that's all of them done. So now all of the market gods are on my main, and that means I can just go around and thieve from the stalls here. I'm going to do this for a little bit of time and see what kind of XP rates we get. So it seems like I'm getting about 42 to maybe 45k XP per hour, which is not bad for thieving, I guess. It's okay, but I do have some other methods as well that I'm going to try out. The negative thing about this method is that I need to have my alt parked right there the whole time because without an alt this is a really bad method, especially without any stamina or anything. But then again I do have a very high chance to get the rocky pet doing this method. This is actually one of the best ways to get rocky in the game, so that is a positive. But let's go ahead and check some other methods out as well before we decide on anything. The other obvious thieving method for me is pickpocketing the Fremenic citizens. They give 65 XP per pickpocket and a decent amount of cash as well. They're like a mini RD knight, I guess. And there are some pretty decent spots where you can trap these citizens in, so that is a positive. But let's see what sort of XP rates we are getting with this method. Well, I found a really good spot to do this. There are two citizens in this house and they can get trapped in between all of these beds. There's 56 thieving in the first level of the grind and I am getting pretty much the exact same rates, 43k at the moment. So yeah, this is maybe a little bit better than the stalls. Uh, it's really easy to do. I don't need any setup. I don't need an alt or anything. And I do have one more method that I want to try out. And that is the nature rune chest up here, 25 XP each time you open it. This is probably going to be quite a bit lower XP rates, but uh, we would get some nature runes instead of coins or useless fish or furs, which would be really handy in the future, I think. Uh, much more handy than cash or anything else, I don't need that anymore. But nature runes would be really, really awesome. This is a kind of a boring method you just have to hop all the time when you are thieving the chests but yeah i'm gonna do this for a while and we will see what kind of rates we're getting here so looking at the rates 8k per hour not good at all definitely not doing this all the way to 75 uh that means probably the pickpocketing is the way to go here uh it's gonna take like 20 hours to get to 75 which is not all that bad i guess just gotta get to work well, that is going to do it for this episode. We knocked out a lot of chunk tasks. We got three new chunks. And yeah, I just have a couple more chunk tasks in Keldergrim before we are finished with that. Maybe even in the next episode, we are rolling new chunks. So remember to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss that next video. As always, a big thank you to all the channel members. In the steel tier, we have Batrap the Games, Selma Laid, Teeters, Grayson, Kai, Digidog SP, and Farcasted. And in the Runa tier we have Acons to Earth and Norton Iron Man. Thank you so much for your continued support on the channel. If you want to be a channel member, there is a link down in the description. But with all that said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next episode.